Okay, so my favorite topic to trade on is long-term mentality. Um, it's a fancy way of saying grit, a fancy way of saying stickability. Um, so write this sentence down. I will be a diamond unless, and finish that sentence. I will be a diamond unless. Or maybe, maybe I, before you came this week, your sentence would have been, I will be a diamond unless. Okay, so Sir James Dyson failed at making a vacuum cleaner 5,126 times. Dyson vacuum, y'all know you see the Dyson vacuum, right? 5,126 failed prototypes. That just doesn't, I mean, that's not even like how many efforts that never made it to a prototype. Over 5,000 times. Steven Spielberg was denied access to film school twice. Abraham Lincoln, you guys know he had many failed public attempts at political office. And he said, my greatest concern is not whether or not you have failed, but whether you are content with your failure. Discontent is actually a good thing when it has to do with your failures. Why is long game mentality important? Number one, it will help prevent burnout. Fallon said yesterday, never struggle with burnout because her long-term vision was so solid. Her long-term mentality, she never intended to, for it to be quicker or easier. It will also help you develop a long-term work ethic. Sometimes what we need is to just increase our work ethic. Think about athletes. They practice hours and hours and hours every single week to perform in a game that is usually less than two hours in which they seem see less than an hour of actual playtime. So they practice perfecting this technique and over and over and over again, failing forward, trying different things. But the actual game is less than an hour. And then they do that repeatedly in hopes of making it to championship right okay how how do you develop long-term work ethic first of all vision casting has to be really solid this is the question that i asked you guys earlier if your primary leg quit would that change your long-term mentality what if your <laughs> primary leg quit and took her whole team with you would you stay the course? It's real easy to say, oh, for sure, for sure. But would you? Is your in-game vision so rock solid that you would persevere anyways? And if not, what has to happen for that to change? Okay, so basically grit can be defined as passion and perseverance for long-term goals. Passion and perseverance for long-term goals. Some of us have passion, we just lack perseverance. <laughs> So what does grit include? You will not see something through if you don't possess grit. And these are the four things it requires. Number one, a tremendously deep interest in what you do. A tremendously deep interest in what you do. Now, does that mean that you are wildly passionate about selling ProBio 5? Probably not. But are you interested in helping people overcome health? struggles are you interested in showing people that they can be healthy okay number two <clears throat> the capacity to practice grit includes the capacity to practice you guys know that seinfeld his first time on stage he walked on stage he's a comedian he's super funny and very inappropriate but he walked on stage and started his act and froze got such severe stage fright he was booed from the stage like he never said a word he never got to say any of his jokes he was booed right off the stage but grit requires the capacity to practice number three it requires a sense of purpose 
it's the 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 what you're in doing has to be important to others, not just to you guys. Natalie covered that yesterday. <laughs> and grit includes hope. Grit must include hope that this will all be worth it. Okay. So we talked about the fact that long-term mentality means that the integrity of your vision must be able to withstand the hard things. Here's a hard thing. The team that got you to Ruby or senior Ruby very likely won't be the team that gets you to Emerald or Sapphire or Diamond. <laughs> Doesn't mean anything bad about you. And it doesn't mean anything bad about them. Are there things that you can do to have some of that team come? Sure. Guess how, guess how many of my teammates from when I was senior Ruby are here? There are zero are here. Zero. Not only just me, even in the house. I mean, here actively building zero. Zero of them. <laughs> Yet here I am. Solid, stable diamond business. Had I waited for that team at senior Ruby to want to go the distance instead of being willing to go and fail forward and build again, I would still be waiting. <laughs> so the team might not be what gets you to the next rank, but the wisdom that you've learned along the way can be extremely beneficial. What you have to have for long-term mentality is mental toughness. You're going to have to be willing to be com get comfortable being uncomfortable. If you spend more time comfortable, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> Mental toughness means focusing on the next right thing. What can I control? I can't control someone's response. I can't control someone's willingness. I can't control someone's reaction. What is the next thing I can focus on that I can control? Here's what you can control. Here's a list of things that when everything feels like it's taking a big old, here's what you can control. Number one, you can control your focus. You can, what you focus on will expand. So you could focus on the lack or you could find something of abundance to focus on. You can control your focus. Number two, you can control your attitude. Number three, you can control your body language. Well, I'm just not a confident person. I just, yeah, yes, you can. What do confident people do? They stand with their shoulders back. They sit up straight. They make eye contact. You can learn traits of confident body language. Yes, you can. So that when you go to that uncomfortable lunch meeting, I'm carrying myself that way. You can control your effort. You absolutely can control your thoughts. And you can control your excitement. I firmly believe that momentum is an energy first. <laughs> okay, so we said long-term mental or long game mentality looks like having a very solid vision full of integrity, like the ship. Number two, it looks like you make decisions strategically, not emotionally. When you're making decisions in your business, you make them strategically, not emotionally. This is why I tell people who are struggling with, do I stay or do I go? Listen, make that decision on the next good day. Make that decision on the next good day. Today feels like a hard day. Let's not make that decision today. Never quit on a bad day. Same thing with my kids in sports. Listen, you don't want to do this anymore? Listen, let's let's talk about this on the next great day. The next time you score that game-winning goal, let's talk about it that day. You want to quit on a friendship? Okay, let's wait and talk about this on the next good day with that. <clears throat> it looks like not looking for the next shiny opportunity. The grass is not greener on the other side. <laughs> And if it is, it is probably fertilized with blank. <laughs> the grass is going to be greener where you water it. 
Other newsflash, no matter where you go, there you are. Whatever's holding you back from being successful here, it will follow you to the next shiny thing until that starts looking dull. And it will follow you to the next shiny thing until that starts looking dull. Long game mentality means not being easily swayed. We don't get on this emotional roller coaster that can be our business. It just looks <laughs> like expecting the roller coaster to be business. We expect ebbs and flows. That doesn't determine our, our tenacity, our drive to move forward. Guys, ebbs and flows in your business is totally normal. What if Amazon <laughs> looked at their sales in the month of January and freaked out because they weren't as high as the month of December? Why are Amazon sales so high in December? There's just natural ebbs and flows to every single business. It's okay. Listen, there's, there is lots of positive attributes to business ebbing. Because when business is ebbing, you're focused on systems. You're focused on where are my gaps? What must I improve on now so that when the next wave comes, I'm better prepared to make that wave last longer and be more effective for most people? Listen, we can't stay in momentum 100% of the time. We can't. So we've got to learn how to behave in the ebb. Okay. Um, what does the long-term work ethic look like? It looks like not choosing the easy road. We're going to have to get out of this mentality of wishing it was easier. Some of you came along in 2020, 2021, and it seemed like what was normal was quick, fast, fun, easy, exciting. Some of us were here years before that. And normal was <laughs> failing forward, being uncomfortable, having to grow. It looked like slow and steady wins the race. It looked like the speed out of the gate was never an indicator of your long-term success. And newsflash, it's still not. I've had people come out and fly and fizzle. And some who have come out barely crawling who will absolutely be diamonds. So it looks like not being, uh, not choosing an easy road. It also looks like not giving yourself an out. No, don't give yourself an out. Well, this big thing has happened. And so I just need to, here's my favorite. I'm just going to take a step back. What, what you really are saying is I'm just going to let the snowball roll down until I almost suffocate. And then I've got to wiggle to get even out from under the snowball again. You know, it's easier than taking a step back. Just do what's necessary to hold the snowball where you got it. If you've got to get some things in order, Keep doing what you've got to do to keep the snowball here. Because when you stop that, it rolls back. And man, it's real hard, real hard to get, not impossible. Emily Roberts has a great video about what it looks like if you need to start again. Some people say, I don't want to have to start over. You're not starting over. You're starting again. Okay. It also looks like trusting the process. That reward is coming. Trust the process. If it weren't so, we would not stand up here and tell you it was so. That would be so cruel. <laughs> it would be so cruel. We know it's so. We see the levels rising every year. We see new people coming and growing. We see rank advance. We see these things. They're not better than you. They don't have a secret sauce that you don't have. They're just trusting the process. We've got to get to where we're operating out of trust and less out of fear and panic. Fear and panic comes, it's a, it's a react, like it's a reactive emotion to something that we perceive as negative. Guys, your points have zero power to be positive or negative. They're just neutral. They're just neutral. They're just numbers. They're just inanimate objects. They're just numbers. <laughs> what you're thinking about those points are going to determine if they're good or bad. Same with food, by the way. Um, okay, it also looks like doing the work learning, growing, and staying consistent because we understand that we can judge our likelihood of success based off of our current path of trajectory. If I keep doing what I'm doing, am I going to get where I want to go? In regards to my fitness, the answer today will be no because I ate 
so many M and M's. But it's look at <laughs> looking at the trajectory. If I just keep doing what I'm doing, is this eventually going to get me where I want to go? If so, keep doing it. Keep doing it. Okay. Long term work ethic looks like this. Long term realistic expectations. Instead of wishing that things were easier, taking ownership of the responsibility to get better. Things feel easier when you're getting better. Weights feel lighter when you're getting stronger. So instead of wishing it were easier or quicker, go get better and move a little faster. There will absolutely be another wave like what we saw in 2020, 100%. I am not an overnight success. You guys saw, oh my gosh, she wasn't maintaining Emerald for a year. And then she hit Sapphire one month, Diamond the next, re-entry the next, Silver, Gold, Senior Gold, Ruby, Senior. That's what you saw. What you missed were the four years of never maintaining a rank, of always being backwards, but doing what I knew would eventually get me there. You saw a compound effect. And when this happens again, and it will, it, it's historically proven to be true. Statistically, it's coming. There are always momentum. All, it's always coming. But the ones who will ride the wave are the ones who are out here right now. We're just doggy paddling on our, on our what's it called? surfboard. We're just doing the work to stay on the surfboard, working towards shore, and that wave is going to come. Some of you will ride it. Some of you will miss it. And then you will be bitter because of it. And I'm telling you how you catch the wave is you do the daily consistent work right now that's just as easy not to do as it is to do. The things that you're telling yourself at the end of the day, oh, it's not that big of a deal. I know I should have probably done some IPA, but it's it's not, it's okay. I can, I'll do more tomorrow. It's just as easy not to do it as it is to get back out of the bed and go do the work. Watch out for those things. The ones that feel like not a really big deal. Like <laughs> it won't matter just this one time. Because those one times, that's where that's gonna, it's going to sneak up and get you. Okay. Now I want your sentence. Look at the sentence that you wrote down before you got here that said, I'll be a diamond unless. And then compare it to now how you really feel. Like, I'm going to be a diamond unless. Somebody said, unless I die. That's how I, I really felt that way. And that's why I was okay with points being down. So I was okay with so-and-so not deciding to do this. Okay. I'm not dead yet. And then I love this quote. It says, your purpose is your homing beacon that keeps you on track and prevents you from being distracted. Your goals are valuable stepping stones that lead you to finding your purpose. That's why I say your purpose is unending. Purpose isn't something that you do. Purpose is something that you be. It's very big and important different. Living your purpose is the way you are. That's being. Remember that they call us human beings not human doings. With a clear, articulated purpose, no matter what comes in your life, you won't stray. You know with which choices serve your purpose and which ones do not. When times get tough, your purpose will pull you through. Without one, you're unclear as to why you're going through the difficulty. When your life's purpose is held high and you're down in a valley of despair, you'll always be able to see a glimmer just over that next hill. You take your struggles in stride, and you turn your stumbling blocks into stepping stones, and eventually you climb up and out into the bright light of success. Your purpose and the passion that flows from it is what empowers you to do that, no matter how tough it gets. Oh.